Hello everyone, my name is Loco and today it is time for a best of three series of professional Zerg vs Terran. Spawning here in the southeast corner of Kairos Junction in game number one of the series and playing with the blue SCVs. We are looking inside of the main base of Maru. And his opponent spawning in the opposite corner playing with the red Zerg drones. Also from South Korea, we have none other than Linok. I actually recently made a video going over Linux Zerg vs Protoss build order. He loves going for the night is all ins. I, uh, I'm personally still a big fan of that strat. I think it's absolutely awesome. In case you're interested, I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below in the description of this video. Regardless though, in case you're unfamiliar, Maru is an absolute monster. He won all GSL code S's over in South Korea uh, in 2018. He's still looking very, very solid as well in 2019 so far. And I gotta be honest with you, he is certainly one of the very strongest, if not the strongest Terran player on the planet. Although, if you were to ask me, I am personally a big fan of the way that TY is playing right now. TY is looking really strong, but even after the results that Maru recently had at IEM Katowice and also not really the strongest showing at BlizzCon, he is still the rank one player on Aligulek. And while obviously statistics are just statistics, Maru certainly is not a weak opponent. You know what's weird though? I, I feel like I've been watching Maru games for such a long time already, literally since 2010 when this game first began. And I know I've said it on YouTube before, but the man, I just quickly looked it up, he's 21 years old. I, I feel like I've been watching his games since the very beginning of StarCraft, and I have. But he's 21 years old right now. He qualified for the first GSL Code S in 2010. Y you can do the math on how old this man was back then, but well, I guess this boy was back then. Insane, insane. Now, Linok, of course, definitely not a weak opponent either. I, b I believe he's like 23, so like a lot of these South Korean pros in, in, in particular, they are very, very young when they first start playing. I guess uh, I guess when I think back though of my own time in high school and whatnot especially, I did have a lot of time. I didn't play I didn't play StarCraft though. 99 woodcutting wasn't gonna get itself, okay? I, I played a lot of RuneScape myself, but there's no denying that uh, if you dedicate a lot of that time, right? You obviously are extremely fast at that age when you play video games. It's it's pretty awesome. They certainly are uh, very, very scary players about 10 years or so down the line. Anyways, we'll see where this game is going to take us. Nice little play there by our Terran player, denying the third base in the pervert location right now for Zerg. But already, Linok is going ahead and he took it over at a different location instead. Now, great little bit of micro. That's what Maru does. It's these small little moves that he makes where he's not going to let you escape with the drone. Maru tried to, uh, or rather, Linok tried to scoot over to watch the other Vespian Geyser, but immediately the Reaper moved over. And since it can technically occupy like a little square over there, you can't throw it down and he gets the kill on the drone. It's these really small moves that separate the best from the very, very best. One more one opener here though for Maru. Nothing out of the ordinary. I don't even really know if it's worth scouting right now. If you look at the Overlord positioning right here for Zerg, he hasn't even really bothered sending the Overlords too far out, which I kind of like seeing. He's just making the assumption like, okay, I know what you're going for. It's either going to be a 16 Marine drop or it's going to be a 1-1-1. This is something we have been seeing really non-stop over like the last year or so. I don't think you're going to do anything weird. So I don't even need to bother scouting your natural if it's really only two options anyway. It's obviously a bit of a ballsy move and I think that Zerg players will likely get punished with that at some point in the future. But for now, the Zergling is going to be the name of the game and indeed Lino gets it up on the ramp right there and you will scout out exactly what is happening. So it's Tech Lab right now coming up on the barracks, which means that of course Maru could switch it around here with the starboard as well after this Liberator comes out. Now, Linok, he is forced to take this as his third base, and this is actually one of those decisions that's actually pretty tricky. Where are you gonna go ahead and take the fourth base? Usually, if you take your third over here, you can grab the fourth towards the south. However, grabbing this one towards the east of the third is a little bit tricky. Sometimes Zerks will go for the one in the center, but then you expand to watch your opponent. So maybe we will see him once again head on over in that direction, but it, it definitely dictates the pace of the game. And it's gonna take the defenses uh, right here to uh, a bit of a limit as well for Zerk here for now. 
Anyways, nothing too crazy here though for Maru. He's just simply gonna transition towards a very normally timed third command center as well. And in game number one, if I'm looking at the production tab right now for both players, it is looking like a very normal, high level macro game. Neither player really taking any risks, any unnecessary decisions here. And the Liberator, yep, will be picked off. Now the Hellions are still poking in here and there. Gotta say, I love the defense so far from Linok, right? He hasn't overdroned here, he hasn't underdroned. He's still getting himself the upgrades here in time. Finally going up right now towards the Lara, but most of the resources that he had in the early game are all spent on workers. And obviously that allows him to transition towards a really smooth mid game as well. So with no damage really being done here so far for Terran, I really, really like this position here for Zerg. It feels a little bit strange to say that, right? But it really comes down to the early game defense of Zerk and the amount of damage that Terran players can deal. If you deal, like, no damage, so three drones are killed here, and it's not a whole lot. Uh, Zerk is just gonna skyrocket when it comes to that economy. Marudo assessing the situation correctly, so I like this. He's transitioning right now towards Bio, but after starting up the third command center, he already got himself the double engineering bay going as well. So he's like, okay, I know you're gonna go ahead and grab quick upgrades, I'll do the same on my side of the map as well, so we'll sort of just match you in that regard. You can have the small economic lead. With my third CC done, I'm gonna be able to catch up just fine anyways. So you'll have the advantage for now, but I'll switch into something even more greedy here. Now, Linok though. Okay, so he arrived at Lair, got himself a macro hatchery, no fourth hatch anywhere yet, but he threw up the Spire and then the Baneling Nest at the same time. Mutaling Bane, obviously, has become a little bit more popular again over the last couple of weeks. Although it's still one of those things where I feel like Hydraling Bane is just superior, right? I guess Mutaling Bane, though, is phenomenal at stopping dropships and everything along those lines. It's a very mobile unit composition, but using Mutas in engagements is always so difficult to achieve. They're just simply so vulnerable. I mean, if you leave them on idle for a little bit and Marines get underneath, they're gone. Like, you blink twice, Stint Marines scoot in, immediately the, uh, the Mutas are gone. So it really comes down to the control of the Zerg player. Anyways, it is going to be Mutaling Bane, though, so that uh, is, in a way, a bit of a blast from the past, right? We took a, a bit of a different way to get to our unit composition than what we used to see back in like 2010, 2011 or so, which is when uh, Mutaling Bane was the standard. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, it's still certainly something that you can go ahead and play just fine. All right, Zerklings though, ooh, making their way across the map. 1-1 one, one is done on these links, and that's a big deal. A lot of these units were actually on idle, and that means that all of a sudden Zerklings are everywhere. At the same time, Maru actually going with a push right now towards the fourth base here of Zerk. That one certainly will be killed, but while the links in the main and the natural are being cleaned up, we see a lot more links scooting over towards the third uh, command center here of Terran as well. Fourth hatchery though, looks like that was killed, that was not a cancel. And while indeed Linok is losing a lot of SE, uh, or, or rather uh, Maru is losing a lot of SCVs here, I, mm, I, I, yeah, I think, I still think I like this position here for, uh, for Linok quite a bit better. I mean, he's done so much damage. As long as he can clean up this aggression here, he's gonna be in a good spot still though. That siege tank there from the back, dealing a lot of damage. Great target firing as well by Maru, cleaning up all of those banelings with ease, but once again, right, that's a scary amount of Zerklings. They are getting 2-2 right now. Queens from the early game once again being utilized here. And while the Queens are not going to be able to get the kill on the Siege Tank, I think that the Zerklings will be able to do so just fine. All right, so in the blink of an eye, while Maru was moving out, Zerklings moved in. That was a very, like, Serol... Very uh, Raynor like move, right? Very aggressive counterattack. Rather than engaging the army, he just used the reinforcements to clean that up instead. And it looks like Maru may very well be caught with his pants down once again as more links slip into the mineral line. And the third base is once more forced to get lifted up as well. Wonderful position here for Lino, really. So now we finally see Mutas coming up. Was this actually scouted here by Maru? No, he didn't see the Spire at all, so this will blindside him even more. He does have, obviously, uh, Marines and whatnot to deal with it, but look, no missile turrets. There are no missile turrets set up everywhere. Now, apparently, this one is just lifting up and down and up and down and up and down, which is fair enough, but if the Mutas swoop into the main base while the Marines are, <laughs> while the Marines are occupied, right? This is going to deal so much damage. Yeah, nice pickup right there by Maru, but the third is still not mining. Is he gonna once again lift it up? Nah, no lift up this time around. But here we go. Mutas. 
goes straight towards the main base. Maru does not know that the Spire was coming up. He's going to certainly lose at least a couple of those SCVs. There you go, and this is so scary. A lot of these SCVs are actually still weakened from those Zerklings that went into the main base earlier, and that already kind of paid for the Spire, right? Immediately a uh, Thor is coming up, but by forcing out a Thor, it means that there's going to be less siege tanks available on the ground, which makes Mutaling Bane once again very, very potent, because the Lings and the Banes can just connect with the Marines easier. And once the Marines are gone, guess what? The Mutas can clean up the rest. So the unit composition does make sense, it's just very, very difficult to control. Alright. Marines does split up into every single area. Ooh, gotta be careful. The Muta's actually stuck into a bit of a weird corner. They gotta be careful. If they actually can't get out, they're gonna be in a world of trouble. Apparently, he does commit, but that's a lot of Muta's falling down right there to those stim pack Marines. Although, actually, wow, it looked like, like six of them fell, right? Is it just me? Only two of them ended up going down there. They're baiting the Marines towards the burrowed Banelings. He's like, hey, I'm on idle. Come and get me. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Linok baiting them into the burrowed banelings. Ah, sorry guys, I don't want to be a biased caster, but I am a Zerk player at heart, and that just that just makes my heart beat faster. Okay, that was beautiful, beautiful little move there by Zerk. It wasn't even that many Marines, but it's just a mental defeat. Here come the baits into the SCVs as well. And yeah, that is certainly all she wrote there for Maru in game number one. Game number two will take us to Cyber Forest LE. And Maru, ooh, right at the very beginning of the game, is already sending out an SCV. So, <sighs> last year there was a running joke that the whole map is the main base of Maru, okay? So you know how Terran players are not limited by, like, creep or power fields or anything along those lines? Which means that Maru, if he wants to... He can choose his main base to be like right over here, or like right over there, or like right... He can choose to build structures wherever he likes, and I think that is indeed what we will see in this match. As the second SCV is right now also making his way towards this area of the map. Now, the question is, is Linok gonna be able to scout the proxy barracks? He did do a great job scouting in the previous match, right? Not really putting his overlords into any super dicey scenarios, but still scouting around. SCVs are sneaking by, though. His overlord does not have vision just yet. And the second barracks also goes up completely uncontested. And even if you were to see it, to be honest, with the way that this is like a beautiful tucked away position, the SCVs are basically always going to be like spending a lot of time... Oh my god, actually, look at that, right? So the whole backside, I'm pretty sure that's not accessible with drones if you were to attack it. The same for, like, I don't know, like 80% of the surface area of the one on the right. Super cool play right there by Maru. Even if this was scouted, good luck shutting it down because the drones just simply can't kill the SCVs in that angle. Anyways... Maru, uh, he's very well known for cheesing, very well known for proxying, and what makes him scary, obviously, is that he's not afraid to do it. I've said it a few times before, but um, I remember last year at WESG, Maru was not afraid to uh, put up a, a double proxy rex. That was on the, the Frost map, I, I, I don't recall the, na the name of the map very well, but he ended up... Uh, oh, Fracture Alley, that's it. He put, it, uh, he put like $200,000 on the line by going for a proxy barracks while being like the strongest macro Terran in the world. It's... <laughs> the man is a monster. Great defense so far though by Linok, getting the scout off right there on what's going on at the very last possible moment. Ooh, looks like the one SCV will be able to get away, but the, uh, the Marine is not gonna be so lucky. Bunker though did finish up, and that's kind of scary, right? If one Marine gets in there, it becomes very, very difficult for the Terran player, or for the Zerg player, rather, to stop this. So you need to basically prevent the Marines from even getting in there. Ooh, he's trying to bait the Marines up towards the high ground. Overlord obviously spoiling exactly what's going on. Link's right now available, though. They're going to go after the Bunker. Bunker certainly is going to be forced to get Selfridge there, and... Well, while it wasn't big of an investment there for Terran, the defense so far has been absolutely spot on for Linok. Right? Well, good luck trying to break this now without a bunker. The spine crawler is going to finish as well. Queens are coming out. I think this is easily held. Now, you want to hear something funny? You want to hear something beautiful about this? Even though Maru certainly committed a lot there to the attack, he's actually ahead right now in workers. I think that's the reason why he likes going for this build a lot. Obviously, he's very late right there with the expansion, and Linok is going to be able to catch up just fine. But it allows Maru to be in firm control of the game. And that's what I like about his playstyle a lot. He's not afraid to throw his opponent for a bit of a loop. 
just by taking control of the early game. Right now, Maru is the one who gets to be in a comfortable spot. Even though this is a weird scenario to be in, since he cheeses so much, he's very comfortable from this location, and Linok is completely thrown off of his build. How is Linok going to respond right now? Is he going to scout properly what's going on? He will figure out that there indeed is going to be a command center on the low ground. The one SCV there, I like it. Beautiful move there. It's going to actually slow down the CC even more. Really nicely done. Eventually, though, it should finish, and wow, great control there. Once again, Mamaru is going to be able to uh, up those depots right in the nick of time and finish up the command center just fine. Anyways, it all comes down right now to how many workers do you dare to get away with here for Zerg. You always have to make the choice, right? Are you going to commit to a lot of drones and risk it? Or do you think that Terran is going to follow this up with, say, I don't know, quick banshees? Or even like a battle cruiser, right? All of uh, all of all of those builds are still viable. That's the thing about going for the proxy barracks across the map. Even though the proxy barracks went up over here, Maru still was able to start up his factory and then his starport at a reasonable time. Because the only requirement for the factory is a barracks. Doesn't matter where it's built, it can be really far away. So the timing of the factory is not even that crazy here. So he's gonna be able to go for at least one medivac right now. I think he's gonna go for Hellion drops then, right? Makes the most sense. Very, very scary. There's actually an armory coming up right now as well. So, Hellbat will be a possibility here as well. Or maybe he's planning to transition towards full out mech in this match as well. Love the early game here for Linok, but he needs to be careful. You need to be extremely cautious. Okay, so two spore crawlers are coming up. I don't know if he saw this Liberator. Uh, or rather, if he, if he thought it was going to be a Liberator here. It is going to be a Medivac, and the Medivac will unload some of those Hellions inside of the main base of Zerg right now. Here they go. They're going to look to go after the drones. A drone barbecue. Everyone's invited. Need a lot of those drones. Woo. Oh, just barely a pickup right there for Terran. That could have been disastrous, actually, on either end. Losing the Medivac and then losing all of the Hellions there as well could have been a big advantage for Maru. Picking them up like that, though, yeah, it does indicate to me he plans on using them in a follow-up engagement as well. Keep in mind... While uh, Hellions can't be repaired up by a Hellbat or by a Medivac, Hellbats can be healed since they are biological. So Hellions are just mechanical, yet Hellbats are mechanical biological, which means they can be both repaired as well as healed by a Medivac. A couple of Marines right now joining the fray as well. Those were the ones that got a little bit stuck on the other side of the map earlier on. They made their way home, and right now apparently they've decided that they still want to continue fighting for a little while longer. Banshee joining the fray as well, and yeah, Linok looking at that army, he's like, okay, what am I gonna do? Third base is gone. Trying to go for the counterattack, but Maru waiting on the top of the ramp. He's like, okay, you're trying to outsmart me, boy. You're trying to be outsmarting me. Not a chance, and all of a sudden, Linok has to deal with Hellbat in his mineral line. The one Banshee right there from the left as well. It is cloaked. There is detection here for Linok, but He's gotten a lot of damage done already with it. Couple of Hellbats right now getting into a great position right there as well, making it hard for these Zerklings to get this around. More and more Zerklings are bleeding in right now, but the damage that Terran is dealing here is ridiculous. Look at the amount of workers here. This is by no means an all-in right now for, uh, for Terran. I mean, this is really just some dedicated pressure. And, well, oh my god. Seven more drones end up going down here. More aggression. Oh my god, he just reinforced with more Hellions. He just reinforced with more Hellions. Now there's a Spire done. Mutas are coming up, but Maru is not going to fall for that trick a second time, it looks like. We see additional factories now being constructed. Third command center already done. I think he's planning to go like Cyclone, or I guess maybe right now Thor's if he sees that it is going to be Mutalis. But man, does he not care. There you go. Indeed, uh, the Thors are right now coming up. Hellions making their way to watch the main mineral line as well. And well, eventually, right, Mutas are gonna be fine at cleaning this all up, but the damage has already been dealt. Linok knocked down to three workers remaining, whereas Maru has 55 SCVs. <laughs> More of them coming up. And uh, yeah, I think as soon as the Thor is spotted, that's basically game, right? Even a Banshee now moving across. I mean, you, you can hate it or you can like it, right? I, I, I love it. I think it's awesome. I think this continuous cheese play from Maru, it is so cool. Now, actually, this could deal some damage, but yeah, there's the Thor. What are you going to do? Thors are very good. They uh, have a lot of range nowadays, and <laughs> they even got one more range. They have now 11 range, which is, I think, the other than maybe Tempest. I don't know what the Tempest range is, but yeah. 
they're pretty good at hitting air units. So that does make us turn to game number three. Okay, so we find ourselves on Port Alexander. Oh, Maru! Are you, are you, are you for real right now, Maru? Really? Really? Are you gonna just... So, this is what Maru likes to do. He's like, alright, you lost one game. What about you lose a second one as well? Trying to out-macro me in game number one. All I did wrong was leave my depots down. It was one little slip up. Sure, you won a game. I'm gonna try again and see if I can deal some damage here with, I guess, a proxy barracks. Yep, second one joining the fray as well. So I do indeed think that this is once again gonna be that quick double proxy rex. Now, a lot of Zerg players lately, I don't know if uh, if Linok was doing that in this series so far, but a lot of Zergs lately have been pulling drones out of gas a little bit earlier in favor of a quicker third hatch. So they basically delay link speed for just a little bit and then get the third hatch going. In this case, oh, it's gonna be a third one as well. So proxy barracks number three is gonna join, I think, here too. And that's gonna be a lot of aggression. If Linok decides to go for that quick third hatch build, he is in a very, very tough spot. Now he's shown us extremely well how to counter the cheese, right? That defense in game two was spot on. Well, the follow-up push from Maru was really nice, and you could see Maru being very comfortable in that scenario. Um, I wonder where this game is going to take us, honestly. Eventually, this Overlord should scout it, but I think it's going to scout it when the proxy uh, Marines are already out, right? Yeah, no, that, that Overlord may just actually be ready to its death right now. Bunker will likely come up here as well. Yep, outside of the vision range there. So, Linok won't know until this uh, this uh, hatchery is done. Well, here we go. The Marine does indeed get spotted. Rather than going after the Overlord though, Maru actually decides to rally towards the bunker. So, I'm assuming that's the superior play. I personally probably would have gone after the Overlord and then lose the game, but... Anyway, by the way, the third, uh, the third barracks there, I think it got cancelled, yeah. So, Maru has looked at it, he's like, okay, I don't want to overcommit here, no reason to do that. My opponent scouted it, so he's likely going to be able to hold it again. This time around, though, Linok is not doing the same trick. Instead, okay, instead of pulling the drones, he's going up to a Roach Ward. Um, so what exactly is his plan right now? Isn't he going to lose the command or the hatchery right here? Well, it's a metal one, okay? It kind of looks like a command center. But uh, it's going to start burning here soon as well. Have you ever seen biological matter burn? Not, not, like, uh, not like this does anyway, but... I, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm a little worried here. So this is, I think, a full wall as well for Maru. He's gonna be able to get units through the bunker towards the other side just fine. Roaches are coming up right now. There's a queen out as well. She decided to lay down a creep tumor. If he wants to hold down this hatchery, he needs to commit real soon. I don't know if the, if, if the roaches are gonna be out soon enough. No, I think he's just gonna give up the, 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 the hatch. Uh. So what's the plan? All right. So he's gonna go for Ravagers. Now there are one base Ravager all-ins for uh, Zerk that are extremely strong against Terran. So that's essentially what Linok has transitioned into right now. With 12 drones on minerals and 6 in gas, he can continuously produce Roaches and Ravagers. So he's likely gonna go for a lot of Ravagers and try and just get as many of those out as possible. There is that factory follow-up here for Terran. Command Center on the low ground starting up right now as well. But I am looking at this right now, and I am a little bit worried here for Zerk, because what if once again there's going to be a Banshee out? What are, the, what, what are you going to do against Banshees? That's all he's trying to do right now. Ooh, two hit points on the Ravager. Another hatch will, by the way, be planted down as well. I guess he's just planning on breaking this and then playing Macro. I assumed he was going to follow it up with an aggressive move. Selvage right there being utilized. 25 minerals lost there in total. I think that's a trade that Maru would like to take, because once again, he is the one who gets to be in charge of this match. And that's what makes him scary. Okay, so different response here though by Linok this time around, right? He's gonna go up towards a lair right now. What are his options at lair? I guess he could he could go for a Nidus Worm. I think a Nidus Worm would be pretty sick. Oh, is he gonna? Yeah, he is! Okay. I was gonna say, in the, for the longest time, this was like a pretty much an all-in commitment. Right now, it's obviously still a big commitment, but you can do a lot more damage with it. Ooh, this is a big deal, actually. Losing that Overlord would not allow him to put down the Nidus Worm. Well, I think the Overlord's still dead, so... Yeah, Overseer right now being morphed in. Is he gonna go for the main base? <gasps> 500 IQ decision-making right here by Linok. Oh, okay. So he's like, you know what? 
You cheese me. What about I cheese? Uh, I choose you. No, I choose you. That's that's Pokemon Loco. A different different game, different series. Um, yeah. No, he's gonna get additional queens right now. He's gonna go for a full-on Roach Ravager assault with queen support right now from the inside of the main base of Terran, and the worm is coming up. It is currently on Sky. Oh my god! No, I've never seen this before. Oh man, I've seen this against Protos, okay? Not against Terran. The darkness of the main base. I almost feel like you should put it down over there, right? But I guess I guess he knows what he's doing. He's gonna be able to unload so much. The third command center was coming up. That one's gonna be cancelled here. If he can get a kill right there on Tech Lab, uh, which I think is what he's looking for here in just a little bit, he's probably gonna be in a phenomenal spot. All these structures taking so much damage immediately. There we go. He's gonna go after the Tech Lab. That's the end of the Stimpak research, and good luck trying to come back from there. Still, though, the defensive posture right there from Maru in the, in the natural is still going to be really scary. Obviously, losing these depots is going to supply block Terran as well. Uh, so I think that's what uh, what Maru is uh, is, is going to have a lot of trouble with right now. Still, though, that's a lot of bunkers here. The command center is still alive, and that means that Maru is going to be, uh, at least if he can stabilize, in an okay economical position. Really quick response time, by the way. I love this. Immediately floating over the main towards the third base. He probably faced this several times before. But that's still, uh, that, that's still a scary amount of Ravagers. Is there a follow-up right now for, for Linok? By the way, did he fake the expansion? I think he did. He must have cancelled it. I'm not sure. Anyways, it takes seven corrosive biles to kill a bunker. So it's seven corrosive biles to kill a bunker. He's got enough Ravagers right now to continuously one-shot these bunkers. Even with repair, it's still gonna die. You can't repair fast enough. So I think that's what he's planning on doing right now. There you go. Oh, he even gets the Medivac as well. That's a big deal. A lot of the night mining time right now as well with those Ravagers on the high ground. And I think actually... Oh my... Is Linok doing this? I think he's... Oh my... He's zoning so well! He's zoning so well with those Biles. Trying to not let the Cyclone lock on. Siege Tank now coming out. Beautiful move there actually. Just barely came out as well as the factory is forced to lift up. Banshee coming up as well. Yeah, just go after the Banshee. Go after the, the starport rotter. Man, corrosive bow is pretty good, isn't it? There we go. Force lift off on the command center on the low ground as well. And that bunker is certainly gone. There's actually a uh, drop down supply depot. Oh, the damage here is actually really sick. I love it. Anyways, still though, siege tank right there in the back does not mess around. Command Center will start taking a bunch of damage here as well. You don't want it burning. That's expensive to repair. But uh, I think... I think Linok is just committing to it, right? I can still see about 100 ways at which this can go wrong, though. Siege tanks are really scary, but... Maru hasn't really had a lot of money here for a while, right? Yeah, he's gonna go for another tank here. Hmm. Okay, so instead of fighting down the ramp, he wants to head on over from this area instead. Maru hears the scream, obviously, from where the Nidus is located. He's in a really nice tanked up position. I really want to compliment the way that Maru is playing this, man. That's such a difficult decision to make, right? How do you know where you're going to be fine? The quick decision there to go immediately for the third? Wonderful move, but look at the amount of Ravagers. Oh my god, turns out if you're mining gas from the beginning of the game, on one base even, you get a stupid amount of resources. Stupid amount of gas. There we go, tank is taking damage! Terrible, terrible damage! Bunker also biled down, and even though there's more bunkers remaining, more SCVs are falling as well. Linok actually, with the economic advantage right now, he snipes another one of those bunkers. And I think, yeah, once this is all said and done, Maru is going to be in a world of hurt. Right? He's forced to even evacuate the third base right now. Another bunker takes lethal damage. Biles land even on some of those SCVs. And Maru... After being the one who cheesed, gut cheesed himself. The cheeser becomes the cheeseth. Okay, I'm not entirely sure if that's something you can say, but man, that was beautiful. That was a really cool game there by uh, by Linok. Haven't quite seen a response like that. I think that's what uh, what can happen though with the Nidus Worm being significantly cheaper than it once was. Beautiful plays there by our Zerg player. I hope you enjoyed watching this series. If you did, hit the like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. A special shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day, okay? Do not forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.